factory workers prepare themselves for a very long day. Before entering the factory, the protocol makes it compulsory for them to wear a white overall, cover their hair and shoes with a net, and of course, they must also wear gloves. From that point on, it's all work, as 800,000 to 1.2 million hot dogs are produced every day in the factory. The first step of the process is chopping the meat, which is done in the chopping room. The meat used in this process depends on the kind of hot dog being produced, and there are quite a few options. These include pork, beef, and poultry. However, the Sabret factory makes use of mainly beef, although there are other variants. The meat is transported from the storage area to another area where they are cleaned, but due to the large number of meats being handled, it's impossible for every single piece of bone to be separated from the rest of the meat. However, since the chopping stage is so thorough, there is little to no concern about the presence of bone in the hot dogs. In the chopping room, a large quantity of meat is put into a huge machine, which serves as a grinder. There are several mechanically controlled bowls connected to the grinder, which deliver a previously measured amount of meat into the grinder, where they are grounded to a paste. The grinder contains six blades, all of which rotate at high speed and with great force. However, some strong bones can escape being crushed. Therefore, a more powerful grinder called an emulsifier is used afterwards. After leaving the grinder, the crushed meat is transferred to the emulsifier, which has more blades than the grinder. As a result, it does a better job of crushing the meat and at the end of this process, what was once several giant slabs of meat become meat paste. For each batch of meat that enters the crushing room, about 600 to 1000 hot dogs are produced from it. During the crushing phase, some other ingredients are added to the meat as it is grinded to improve the taste and quality of the hot dog. These ingredients include ice chips and spices such as garlic, paprika, and cherry powder. These spices are mixed in different combinations to provide different varieties of flavors, some of which include cocktails, hot hot dogs, etc. At the end of the day, the crushing phase lasts about 90 seconds, and in total, about 140 flavors are produced. Each is packed in a large and labeled container where the different kinds of beet paste are stored until the next production phase. Up next, the beef paste are passed through x-ray checkpoints where they undergo screening. A factory worker observes the monitor as x-rays pick up anomalies, like a bigger than normal lump in the beef paste or a bone that wasn't crushed in the crushing phase. Once detected, these unwanted items are removed and their origin is traced to ensure that such mishaps never happen again. In cases where the mishaps are too much to ignore, all the beef paste produced in that batch is discarded, and the process begins all over again with extra caution this time. After the screening process is done and all the conditions have been satisfied, the beef paste is taken to the next production step, which is the casing. It's at this stage that the beef paste receives the classic hot dog shape, and that's because of the casings they're placed in. There are two types of casings. However, the cellulose casings are the most popularly used kinds, not just by Sabret, but also by other popular hot dog brands. Unlike the cellulose casings, the other option is a natural casing which remains on the hot dog even when it is being eaten. This natural casing is more expensive and is used by small-scale hot dog production brands. The process of casing begins with stuffing a machine called a linker with the beef paste. This linker shapes the paste and feeds controlled portions of it into cellulose casings, which are supplied at the other end of the machine. The casings are placed on a moving rod several feet long. Therefore, as each casing is used, another one moves in to replace it, and the cycle keeps going until hundreds of cases have been filled. Next, the beef filled casings are placed on a hanger. A factory worker does this process to ensure that the soon to be hot dogs are arranged neatly on the hanger before being rolled into the oven. The oven is a large smokehouse where the hot dogs are cooked under controlled temperature and humidity for about 80 to 90 minutes. Firewood is added to the oven for an extra smoky flavor, but that doesn't happen often. Once the cooking time has elapsed, the freshly cooked hot dogs are transported to another part of the factory manned by another set of workers. 
This division is necessary for sanitary purposes, and workers who must go back and forth between the two sides must follow health precautions. On this side of the factory, the workers deal with the final production stages, which begin once the hot dogs leave the oven. The first thing they have to do is uncase the cellulose casings. First, the linked casings are separated from each other before individual casings are cut open and removed from the hot dog. Next, each hot dog is weighed to check that each piece contains the right amount of ingredients. The process of uncasing is done manually and with machines, which not only increase the efficiency of the process, but also increase the number of hot dogs uncased per minute. At the end of this step, the hot dogs are practically ready, and all that's left is for them to be packaged. All the uncased hot dogs are placed in a large bowl, from where they are hand-picked by factory workers and placed in a compartmentalized conveyor. With each compartment lined with nylon, a specific number of the same flavor of hot dogs are neatly arranged in each compartment, and as they move along, another group of factory workers finalize the packaging. An overhead machine vacuums each compartment until the nylon is wrapped around the hot dogs, and a paper cap is placed over each pack. This paper has been branded with the company's name and logo, and it is sealed against the package at the next stop. Once that's done, each completed pack is sent on another conveyor, which takes them to the point where they are stacked and arranged into cartons, which are transported to retailers within and outside the city. As the conveyor transports the hot dogs, an inspector checks to see if any weren't appropriately vacuumed. This is very important because the absence of air in the package preserves the shelf life of the hot dogs. So many different things can be done with hot dogs. They can be roasted, eaten plain, or eaten with ketchup, mustard, or onions. Your choice. How do you like your hot dogs? Leave your answer in the comments section below.